Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode, I'm going to discuss C++ 20's jthread and give you a quick example as to why it differs or how it differs from the thread that we had previously in C++ 11, 14, 17. So first of all, we do need GCC 10 which doesn't exist yet. So GCC trunk is what we're going to be using for this particular feature of C++ 20. I'm going to start by including thread and I'm going to just make a function that does nothing. Um, like literally a function that does nothing. And I want to create a thread that uses this calls this do nothing function. Now, I can create an empty thread, but what I want to do is create one that actually executes this do nothing function when it runs. So there we go. I've done it. I made a thread that executes do nothing. Now let's go ahead and turn on execution of this. Now we're probably going to get a link error because we didn't link with pthread. Undefined reference to pthread create. There we go. So if you don't know that, you do need to add dash p thread to GCC or Clang on Unix-like systems to get linking with p thread. Now I run this and I get this, what is this? Terminate called after throwing instance of std system error. All right, so I get an exception thrown here, but what is this? It says resource temporarily unavailable. Actually, let's go ahead and join the thread. And it turns out that Compiler Explorer with GCC and threads is not set up to actually let us execute multiple threads. So let's go ahead and move this to a local instance of Compiler Explorer. Okay, here I am in my local instance of Compiler Explorer using a version of GCC trunk that was compiled not terribly long ago. I'll clean up a couple of things here that aren't relevant to the work we are looking at at the moment. Okay, let's paste this in here and execute this. Now I should get that pthread linker error again. There we go, because I still need to add that. Okay, now it is executing. So I am going to comment out this join to illustrate a point. If you leave a thread unjoined with C++ 11 threads, then you get this, terminate called without an active exception. Um, the, the problem is an unjoined thread is required to call terminate on destruction. That's just what they do. If we join it, then it's not going to call terminate on destruction. So let's then talk about jthread. So quite simply at the top level, if I make this a jthread, it's a thread that's going to automatically join if it can. So it's interesting because it's actually a two step thing. The first thing that it does is it calls request stop. And then the second thing that it does is join. So we've, we've done effectively the same thing here. And you can go and look in the destructor documentation for jthread on CPP reference and see that it does something like this. Now let's comment this back out here and let it do its own thing. This request stop though, like what in the world does that mean? It means that it is trying to request a stop. So let's make this, uh, while true, and I know and a loop that never exits is technically undefined behavior. Let's go ahead and see what happens though. So compiling, executing, there we go. Killed, processing time exceeded. We were in a loop. So it tried to do this request stop and it, it never did. So our function here that we passed to jthread can accept a stop token, um, 
like this. And now do we take this by value? Do we take it by reference? Let's see. So I still got code that compiled, even though I passed it in with one parameter and I didn't pass it a parameter. So it recognized that this was what was happening here. And I am going to say while not while not stop requested, do some work. And this compiles. And now it no longer has this, uh, I'm not getting a timeout down here if you didn't notice here, because we did some number of iterations. And then when the destructor was called here at the exit of main, then stop token was set to say that the stop has been requested and then the stop was requested. So let's see if we can get some output here. Ah, uh, we got zero iterations. Okay, let's see if we can put a delay here and sleep for a moment and see if we can get a few iterations of this to actually execute in the background. various ways to do this. I was just messing around trying to convince the thread scheduler on the operating system to actually send work over to the uh, other thread here so that we would actually see it working until it had gotten the stop request notification. So it's it's pretty finicky, it seems. Um, have to do a stop re you know, yields a couple of times. Or, I mean, we could have been smarter and we could have done something like sleep for and sleep for a certain number of seconds, but I didn't feel like being smart about this. I just felt like goofing off for a moment, partially to demonstrate the uh, non-determinism of all of this. So this is jthread and the stop token. Now, personally, I don't think that jthread seems that exciting to me, a thread that automatically joins on scope exit, but I do like the idea of the stop token. And I believe you can use this with other threads or with futures if you wanted to. So uh, be sure to check that out as well. So thank you for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. I hope you learned a little bit more about features coming in C++ 20.